Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from stepbystepainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint a shark in an underwater scene with acrylics on canvas. So I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 inch stretched canvas. I'm going to first go over the paint colors that I used in this painting. I'm using the Liquitex Basics acrylic paints. So this one is titanium white. I also used turquoise and I used phthalo blue. So those three combination of colors are going to do the, are uh, gonna be used for the underwater part. I used Naples yellow to help create the sand color in the ocean floor. And then I also used Hooker's green hue permanent and medium magenta for the coral and seaweed. And then I also used Mars black, not pictured, but I also used Mars black in this painting. And then as far as the brushes, I used three brushes from the Princeton Velvet Touch brush set that you can get on Amazon. I think Michaels also sells the set. It's the three quarter inch wash brush, a number eight round brush and a number four round brush. Of course, feel free to use whatever brushes and colors that you have available. We are gonna start by painting the background first and then I'm utilizing a traceable template for the shark. I have this shark drawing printed out and you can print out the same template and use that or you can draw the shark directly on the canvas when that time comes. So the, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spray my canvas with a little fine mist spray bottle. Um, Sometimes I do this when I'm going to do a lot of blending. This background uh, underwater scene has a lot of blending and a little layer of water on the canvas helps with that. You don't want it to be dripping, um, but just a nice fine layer of water, very fine mist layer of water is going to help get the paint to flow just a little bit better. Um, you don't have to do that if you're really confident with your blending and you can blend fast you can also um, take a, a white paintbrush and apply the water to the canvas or you can utilize just a little bit extra water on your brush as you're applying the paints to the canvas so there's uh, multiple ways to do that so i'm going to i'm loading my palette with the three colors titanium white phthalo blue and turquoise blue and I'm also going to load it with that Naples yellow color. So those four colors are going to be in our underwater scene. And our scene has a very bright white light at the very top and it blends down to like a deep blue and then it blends to the sand. So a lot of blending in this. We're gonna start by loading our three quarter inch wash brush in the water and we're gonna pull it out and kind of pat it dry. Then load it in the titanium white, a generous amount of titanium white. And we're gonna start at the top and we are painting curves. So like a half circle area at the very top of the canvas. So this is the brightest part of our painting where that sun is shining through the water. And we're gonna go a good amount down with this half circle titanium white and because that first layer right up here is going to be white it's going to help us blend that turquoise color into it so I'm going to go down probably about six inches almost to that halfway point with that bottom part of the curve but I didn't paint um, all the way to the left and the right with that curve so I'm just um, bringing that down to the middle part of the canvas and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of that turquoise and mix about equal parts turquoise and white on my palette. And then I'm going to start below that white and gently blend that up into the white. So you always wanna start under the color that you're trying to blend and then you want to very gently paint over that white and let that white and light turquoise blend together kind of fade out at the top we want the top center part to be a pure white and then that blends to the lighter color and we want those streaks those streaks really give a lot of that water texture that we want to create in this painting so we're not going to over blend it 
Then I'm going to grab the turquoise and I'm going to continue. I'm going to start below where I blended it before and this part is going to be more of a pure turquoise. And then I'm going to gently blend it up. Just be really cautious with this turquoise. It's a strong color that will take over your white very fast if you put too much turquoise over it. So if you need to, you can grab more white and go back over it, or you can wipe your brush off of a lot of turquoise and add white because that turquoise dominates that white very, very easily. So you can always uh, grab teeny bits of water if you need to help with the flow, uh, but because the first layer was a fine mist of water, it's allowing that paint to glide very easily. So grabbing that white, kind of working this area where it got too dark too fast, blending that down, but again, we don't need to over blend it. It does not need to be a perfect gradient. I'm gonna bring this down. So my turquoise dips down to below the halfway point of the painting at this point. I'm gonna go back over, make sure my uh, canvas is covered. There's no blank canvas spots still showing through. And then I'm going to start adding in my phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is also a very strong color, so you want to introduce only small amounts to it first. Start below your turquoise, and again, gradually bring it up into the turquoise so that it blends gently with the turquoise. So continue to paint in that curved direction, but when we get to about the three inch mark from the bottom of the canvas, we want to start making our strokes go a little bit more horizontal because we have the ocean floor in this and that is going a little bit more horizontal. So we're curving, but then we're changing our direction of our strokes about right here. So it goes from a curve, slants down, and it eventually goes to more of a horizontal direction. So curving it and then gradually bringing it down horizontally. I'm going to go back up and paint this upper left corner that didn't get touched. So I'm just grabbing that turquoise. Turquoise and phthalo blue blend so beautifully together. I love using these two colors in underwater scene paintings. That phthalo blue makes that ocean look very deep and I love how it blends to a lighter color up into the bright white at the top. So I'm going to take this and start making it go more horizontal. It does not have to be perfectly horizontal. You don't have to use a ruler T-square to line it up perfectly. I'm going to grab a little bit more white on my brush. Uh, what needs to happen here is this darker blue needs to get lighter very fast because we're going to be turning it into sand, believe it or not. So this is white. So I just grabbed white on my brush and it's just mixing with whatever's left, the blue and the turquoise on my brush. And I'm doing left and right strokes. So you can see we created kind of a uh, ocean floor line. So it creates that horizontal line. I'm utilizing a lot of white so we can see that contrast right there. Just taking the tip of the brush and kind of making like an uneven sort of hilly line back there. There's gonna be seaweed growing on that part and it's gonna make it look like that seaweed is way in the distance. So at this point, we're going to introduce our Naples yellow color into the painting, but we wanna get all this blue and turquoise off because the yellow will mix too much with the blue and then it'll look uh, green and we don't want green we want sand color so I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of white and a little bit of that Naples yellow color I'm gonna mix it together on my palette so uh, you just need a little bit of that yellow it's a strong opaque yellow and a whole bunch of white to lighten that up and that'll create your sand color I'm gonna grab some more white we need to use a lot of white in this that's going to help that yellowish sand color mix blend with our blue and so it doesn't turn too green. So I'm going to start at the bottom and this is where our kind of our pure color sand is. It's going, it should show up very, very light pale yellow. yellow. I'm going to bring it up into that lighter blue color 
and when I get there I want to very be very careful not to go over the strokes too much because then it's going to blend to green and I don't want to blend it too much to green it might look a little green but that's okay but that sand color is just going to blend and fade into that blue area and I'm just not um, making my strokes, I'm not doing too many strokes up in that area. I might need to wipe the brush off if it starts turning green. Grab more of that pale yellow and just very gently add that up into that blue area. So the bottom part is lighter. The back part of our floor is a little bit darker. So it's like a, a pale yellow color sand that blends up into a kind of a medium color blue. And just a few strokes. It's okay if a little bit of that, that blue gets down into the sand area. So we have just smooth blend of that yellow, pale yellow, white, a little bit of blue. And we don't need to work it anymore. We are going to go back. So this next step is optional. I recommend you kind of watch what I do first. Um, See if it's a little bit too challenging for you. If it is, you can skip it and the painting will look just fine. But I'm going to add a little bit of texture into my water area um, using turquoise and white. So I, I mixed white and turquoise together. A little bit like more white than turquoise, so it's a little bit lighter. And I'm just using that paint on the tip of the brush. And I'm just doing lines kind of in so you see how we have those streaks I want to kind of reiterate those streaks and do some more purposeful streaks in there just little curved lines going in the direction of that curve so see how that lighter part shows up and kind of that darker part gives it some texture of that water movement um, I'm going to do a little bit up in the white area as well so very short abrupt strokes going in a curved direction. You could also try doing this with a round brush if that's a little bit easier. The round brush is a little bit, um, it's smaller, easier to handle than this flat brush. Um, just kind of these curved sort of water wavy lines. Just a few up in the white area, but make sure to keep the white area super bright. It still needs to be the brightest part of our painting. This next step is also optional. Also want, I would recommend you watching it before you doing, before you do this step. We're going to do the bright white ray lines that are radiating from the top. And they're all going in like a diagonal direction meeting together in the top middle part of the canvas. So you wanna completely rinse your brush off for this. Get all that blue off your brush and load it in just titanium white. Grab that white right on the tip of the brush and start in the top middle of this. And just use the tip of your brush to do lines that are radiating, going in a diagonal direction, all meeting together in the top middle point of the ocean, the top of the canvas. So I'm just very gently streaking those white lines. They're overlapping that. We're gonna do a few layers of this. I'm using the tip of the brush, just very lightly. I'm not pressing very hard at all. You might find that it's mixing too much with the blue and your lines are turning blue. If that's happening, um, dry your painting real quick and then go back to this step and see if you can get those lines to be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go back with a second coat. Again, super bright. So the top part has a lot of that pure white, kind of blends a little bit as it goes down. It kind of fades out. Some of these strokes I can press a little bit harder to make some of those ray lines a little bit thicker, a little bit brighter. Just dragging that brush downwards and that creates that big bright light at the very top of our ocean, that sun shining through. I can go back and I can use the full width of the brush for this. So I'm doing the same thing, dragging it down in a, a circular direction and this one, 
I'm doing it very lightly. So that full width of the brush, you can see how it's creating those very, very, like the thicker ray lines, but it's super light and see-through. Letting that disappear out into the ocean. Almost like it's dry brush style. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. It's dry, it's see-through, but it is creating that bright, shining light at the top. And then we're going to rinse off this flat brush and set that to it the side. I believe we are done with the flat brush for the rest of the painting. And I'm going to switch to the number eight round brush to do a little bit of the little hilly thing in the background and also the dark blue seaweed. So we have this, we already made that hilly line when we use the flat brush to paint the floor. But I just want to go over and reiterate that that is like a hilly light. So I'm going to mix a light blue on my palette. Uh, with the the eight round brush so mix about three parts white to one part dark blue doesn't have to be exact but I'm just taking that and going back over that hilly area and just redefining that real quick so there's like this uneven part of the ocean way in the distance a little bit see how I'm making that hilly part a little bit darker and I could just kind of stroke down below it, kind of let it fade out to the rest of the ocean floor. And then I want to paint seaweed. So this is very simple seaweed, basically. I'm just taking that the phthalo blue color, the dark blue, and painting wavy lines that kind of gather together. So this is seaweed that is further in the distance. This is going to create some really pretty depth in your painting. Some of the seaweed can sway a little to the right if you want it to do that but very, very basic wavy lines. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot in the center because I know I need to get this shark in the painting and the less detail work I put in the center, the easier it is to fit our shark in. So I just did the seaweed on the right and the left. So speaking of our shark, that is going to be our next step. So this is a good stopping point to take a break and come back. Or if you're not ready for a break, just get a blow dryer and dry your painting real quick because we are going to be transferring our shark drawing to the canvas next and the paint needs to be dry for that to work successfully. So dry your painting or take a break. Um, there is a template for this that you can print out on one sheet. The shark is sized for the 11 by 14. You have to resize it if you are using a different canvas size. So just position your shark. So you place your, your graphite paper shiny side down over your canvas and you want to position your shark so yours might be a little bit different depending on where your ocean floor ended up depending on the background so the top of the shark's fin is about three and a half inches to the top of the canvas if you want to measure that um, if you want your placement exactly where my placement is and he's pretty much center in the canvas but like i said you can position him wherever you feel like he would suit best and then you just take a pencil and you trace the drawing and it will transfer to the canvas when you're using transfer paper and templates you want to make sure that you're doing this flat on the can on the table it's a little bit harder to do this if it was up on an easel and you want to press relatively firm so the the lines will come out uh, relatively dark because our background is a little bit of a darker background um, not super dark to where we would have to use white graphite paper but uh, pressing a little bit hard is going to help you see that so and get everything traced including the eye And you can see, barely see that drawing on the camera. I'm going to go back over this and just go ahead with my pencil and draw it so that it is a little bit darker. So that it shows up. 
on the camera and you can see what I'm painting and where I am painting it. And you can do this too if your lines did not show up dark enough for you. You can just take a pencil, go back over your drawing so that it's nice and dark. The, the pencil will erase, so when we're done with the painting and if there's still pencil lines still showing through, you can take a regular eraser and erase it. You can also hand draw this shark if you don't like to use the template and you love the challenge of doing the drawing or you like to add your own personal touch to the drawing, you are always welcome to hand draw any of the template style paintings that I do. And I'm just gonna make sure all these major lines are outlined, including his eye. And then we're going to start painting Mr. Shark in. So I'm gonna introduce Mars Black to my palette. There's a lot of gray in our shark, so we need to use the black to make our gray. And you wanna freshen up some of your white if you need to freshen your white. So I'm gonna start by using my number four round brush and I'll be using the number four round brush for the rest of the painting. So for the shark is all done with one brush. And I'm going to start by making a medium to dark gray on my palette. So I mixed about three parts white to one part black and I'm going to start at the dorsal fin. So this fin at the top, just painting that with that medium gray color teeny bit of water on that brush to help with the flow. So just outline the shape and fill it in. Go in that curved direction of that dorsal fin. And I'm making the edge or the tip of that a little bit more pointed by using a very, very thin a layer of paint to get that to go more to a point. And then I'm going to just start working on his back. So when you go to reload the brush, it's okay to grab a variation of your white and black. So I'm gonna just grab a little bit more white and put that into my paint so that's a little bit lighter. This gray is not solid and consistent. It kind of uh, changes. There's some lighter areas, there's some darker areas. Everything on the top, there's like a little line that divides the top part from the bottom part. Um, everything above that middle line area is gonna be the darker gray. And then we'll do more white on the bottom of the shark doing his back fin again it's okay if our gray kind of varies it's okay to let that kind of mix on the canvas so you can see already we have a variation of gray that dorsal fin is a little bit darker than the back and it just kind of blended in with it I'm painting and contouring strokes so that just means that the direction of my stroke strokes are just going in the direction of the shark shape and we have blue that we can play around with we can grab so I grabbed some of that phthalo blue and mixed that into my medium gray and that can give you another kind of gray like a blue gray in our shark and we can let that blue gray kind of blend with that other medium gray so I'm going to take this blue gray and do the bottom part of his fin with that and just kind of gently blend that up with that medium gray grab a little bit more white in there as I reload the brush and grab different amounts of uh, variations in that white and gray. If you want, you can even mix a little turquoise in there. I did not put turquoise in this. I just used the phthalo blue to make kind of that blue gray color. So we're just painting the upper part of the shark. I'm gonna go around his eye with that bluish gray color and just kind of blend that in. Grab a little bit more white in there. And I'm just filling in the upper body of the shark with my different variations of this medium gray color. Just filling it in solid, letting the gray slightly blend and it gives the shark some uh, slight variation in the tones of gray, very smooth, long strokes.
I'm going to grab just a teeny bit of black right here and I'm going to loosely outline the left part of his dorsal fin and the top part or the bottom part of the dorsal fin, the top part of his back. So that part is a little bit darker. Grab just a teeny bit more black and kind of blend that down so we have kind of a shadowy area down there. A little bit of loose outlining on the edge of his tail and then the pectoral fin. I will paint pretty much the same kind of medium gray color although I grabbed a little bit more white for this one so it's a, t a tad bit lighter. At first grab the black and I'm going to kind of loosely outline the left part of pectoral fin and the top part so we have a little bit of contrast there so it stands out. So next we are going to paint the bottom part of our shark and that is mostly white. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse our brush off and grab titanium white and start filling in the bottom part with white. If you accidentally uh, paint over some of the gray or that gray ends up bleeding down into the white that is okay. We want to actually add a little bit of gray down here as well. So it's not exactly pure white. It's brighter but there's a few little gray areas in it so I'll show you what I mean by that right now I'm just filling in that entire area with the white paint right here I'm going to grab some of that gray on my brush and kind of blend some of that gray on towards the top area. So we want this white to kind of blend a little bit with that gray, but it's still kind of a separate area. So just a little bit of gray towards the top part of the white um, under region of our shark. And then same thing with right here, under his nose area, above his mouth, that is all painted white. I'm going to paint around the opening of his mouth so I don't lose that shape. And his other pectoral fin, I used a lighter color than the first pectoral fin that we painted. So this front fin, a little bit darker, so there's a little bit pop of more gray in that so that it stands out from this area. And see how I'm just kind of outlining the area that's going to be painted in? That helps it stand out. And then I want to kind of blend that. So I'm kind of just going back over my strokes and kind of uh, blurring that a little bit. So where that white touches the gray area, just taking that um, part where they those two colors meet, taking that white and just kind of blurring that in there. If that gray is dry, you can always just grab a little pop of gray on your brush and then kind of go over that area. And then I'm going to paint a few little white reflection lines on the top of his back. So I'm doing these strokes in very, very small little tiny curved strokes. Very, very small. A little bit of loose outlining on the top of his back. But this is just to represent the light reflecting on his back. So just a few little tiny curved white strokes little bit on his back. So I did some loose outlining with that white on the top of his um, back on his dorsal fin. A little bit of loose outlining of that white or that white would be hitting that part on his back tail fin. Same thing, a little bit of loose outlining. And then I went ahead and painted his eye black. So just grab um, Mars black and just do little tiny circle of black right there for his eye and we're going to let this dry before we give him that little white highlight that's on his eye so leave it black for now and then we can use the black for the inside of his mouth 
So it's like a little triangle and a very narrow sort of triangle inside of the mouth area. And then grab a little bit of white on your brush and just redefine your bottom area. So this is the under part of his mouth. I'm just going back over that with another coat of paint and just redefining it. And this same thing over here, under part of his nose above the mouth area. Just going back in there, kind of redefining all of that, making sure it's all connected. And then we have the gills. So they cannot be seen anymore from the drawing when we originally traced it on the canvas, but we can just kind of figure out where they are. So just load your brush in white. In fact, you'll probably need to rinse it off completely and then load the white. And just to the right of his pectoral fin, we're gonna do four kind of wavy lines. It's okay if that paint below it is not dry, but that just creates the gills. And then I did a little bit of loose outlining on that back pectoral fin. A little bit of loose outlining with that white. I'm just going back over some of these areas that I already did like a very thin white line, like this back of his tail and just kind of doing a second coat with the white. And our shark has a second dorsal fin, so, so to the left over here, it's a very, very small triangular shape. And I did that with light gray. This next step is optional, but I decided to add just a little bit of blue in the under part of the shark. So I rinsed my brush off completely and added just a teeny tiny bit of phthalo blue on my brush. And just on the bottom part, I just did a few strokes of this blue um, in some areas of the white part, but making sure that the white part still stays bright and contrasted against the dark part of the shark. So just a few little strokes of blue in there. And next we're going to do the little white dot inside of his eye. So freshen up your titanium white, grab your four round and pinch it so that the bristles go to a point. This will ensure that we get that really tiny white dot that we want. You just wanna take it and dot just the far right part of that black circle. I'm gonna pinch my bristles again and grab the white and there's a little tiny white sort of crescent shape on the left part of his eye. So just loosely outline using just the tip of your brush, the left part of the eye, just a little curved on the left side. You can also do that with a toothpick or a really tiny, tiny round brush if this four round is not small enough for that intricate area. And then I just did a few more little pops of that white highlight on the top. Added a little pop of white down here. Kind of clean this area up a little bit more with some brighter white. And we are done with the shark. We're gonna go ahead and add more details in our underwater scene, including the seaweed that is in the foreground. Some of the seaweed may be overlapping our shark. So we're gonna go ahead and load our palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. And if you need to freshen up your black, you can do so. And also we'll be using some of that yellow color, the Naples yellow hue. So first thing I'm going to do is over here on the left, we have a uh, kind of a, a leaf-like structure of seaweed. So it is a kind of a, a thin wavy line that starts on the bottom and just kind of goes up to the halfway point of the canvas. And there are leaves attached to that wavy line. So I'm going to paint these kind of flowy, wavy leaves. Um, some of the leaves might be swaying to the left, but then swaying to the right. Um, they're narrow and kind of pointed. And I am changing the variety of color in this green. So I am loading different amounts of black. Just be careful with the black. So the black is to darken the green. Um, you don't want to add too much black, just a teeny tiny dot of black that'll 
darken your green, um, but also using that yellow color. So that's going to lighten your green and that's going to create those really pretty variations of color. So I'm just outlining the leaf shape and then filling it in. So a nice flowy line that you paint the shape and then you just kind of let those colors blend and paint it in. So all the leaves are swaying and flowing the same direction. The ones that are on the left side of that line that starts on the left side, but then it sways and points to the right. So that makes it look like that seaweed is flowing to the right. And then we can do another similar seaweed plant in the lower right part of our canvas. So I'm going, to, I'm going to do the same style as the first one, but this one's going to be a little bit shorter. So I did the middle line and then I'm painting all the flowy leaves. I'm going to have them try to flow all to the right, but if some of them aren't flowing to the right, that's okay. Varying the colors, letting those colors kind of mix together on the canvas. So we have, we're using that yellow. You can even utilize white if you want to add some white into your green to lighten that up that way. Creates nice variations in color. Grabbing some of that darker green over here for this right one. This is just by letting those colors all kind of blend together. We have a variety of darks and lights in our leaves. And then I have another seaweed plant that is to the right of the first one we painted, but this one is going to be a different plant. It's going to be a bunch of loose wavy lines going in a vertical direction. So I am going to make this plant overlap part of our shark tail. If you're a little bit nervous about overlapping, you don't have to, you can have your seaweed go around your shark. Adding a variety of greens, just like I did with the other one, using that little bit of black to darken it. So that little piece right there overlapped his fin. And then grabbing little bits of that yellow to brighten up some of those pieces. And they're all just kind of gathering down in the middle, bottom part of the canvas. If you want to do different seaweed, you can. I did add a piece of coral in this. and I'll be adding pink to my palette here in just a second. Do one little brighter stroke right here to get that piece to stand out a little bit better so it's not meshing in too much with that tail. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse all that green, yellow, and black off of our brush. And we're going to load medium magenta onto our palette. So get your medium magenta pink. This is optional if you don't want to add pink coral, but I think the pink adds a really pretty pop of color in this from all the blues and grays. And so this is just going to be like a really simple sort of coral piece. I did like an oval and then kind of a narrow shape it starts out kind of wide under the oval opening and then it kind of goes narrow. So I'm making these sort of tubular coral shapes and they're all kind of gathering down in the middle bottom part of the canvas. And I'm just painting them in a solid coat of that pink. So oval shape and then paint your coral piece in. And then for the shadows, I grabbed phthalo blue. So the inside part of that oval is going to be blue. You can use black if you prefer that to be black, but I just decided to grab the blue for that. So I painted each of those ovals blue. And then I just took that blue and just did a little bit of like shadow on the right side of each of those. And then I took the white and I did little dots on the left side. And then I'm making this sort of flat coral piece. So I'm mixing pink and yellow together. Pink enables yellow together. It gets kind of like a orange coral color. 
And then I just did this like flat coral piece. We don't see much of it, it just kind of goes off the canvas, but just a little flat piece right there under the bottom right seaweed. The last final thing I did with this painting was the school of fish in the upper left corner. And that was done with phthalo blue. I slightly watered it down. I kind of thinned it down and I'm loading that onto my round brush. So I'm kind of twisting the brush. So these are very tiny fish. We're gonna be very simple and basic about this. Um, I'll start with one of the larger ones. So it's just like an oval with points on each side. So like an ellipt elliptical shape, cat eye shape. And then two little curves for the fins, the tails. So basic, very, very basic. And then I just kind of repeated that shape all throughout. So the ones that are on the left are larger and the ones that are in the kind of upper part of the canvas are smaller because they are further in the distance. So that's how we can create depth with our school of fish. So I'm just painting multiple fish. Again, the ones that are to the left are larger and then they're gonna start getting smaller as they go up towards the middle part of the painting. Some of them may not even have the tail. Some of them might even just be little dots because they're so far away. So I'm just gonna keep painting multiple fish. So these ones are just so tiny. We barely see the tail, just little small dots. This one is going to be much larger because it's on the left part of the canvas. So feel free to paint as many fish in this school that you want. You can also add more seaweed or more coral to your painting. You can add a starfish clownfish, whatever else you want to add to your underwater scene. I'm going to go ahead and paint a few more fish. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a shark in an underwater scene. Hope that you enjoyed painting this with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.